Okay. So, tuloy tayo. We're talking about uh, very important topics sa buhay natin, ano? Um, whether ikaw ay follower ni Christ or parang medyo ando ka pa sa point na parang dinidecide mo pa, should I really surrender my life to the Lord? Very important kasi yung tinatawag na guidance, okay? And that's our topic for this month, you know, which way, Lord, okay? Decision-making and the will of God. Sa araw-araw na bang gumagawa tayo ng mga decisions, correct? Okay? Taas sa kamay lahat na gumagawa ng mga decision sa buhay ninyo. May all of us, right? Wala exception naman niya. Lahat tayo, we all make decisions. Yung iba natin mga decisions, hindi naman ganun ka sabihin natin, world-changing o parang catastrophic. Mga simple na decision lang in life. Pero, there are decisions that affect yung ating relationship with God. May mga decisions that affect yung relationship natin sa mga kapatiran, the body of Christ. May mga decisions that affect yung sa relationship natin sa family, sa sa pamilya natin, no? Or may kinalaman sa sa you know, work natin o career natin. And then most especially may mga decisions na nakakaapekto sa ating ministry or or how we are to relate with all those people out there na hindi pa nakakilala sa Panginoon. Decisions do matter. Okay? And sometimes hindi natin masyado siguro na bibigyan ng attention paano tayo nagde-decide. O ando yung parang pinaka-motivation natin when we're deciding. So, sometimes, hindi natin sinasadya, we make the wrong decisions. Now, thankfully, uh, mabuti naman ang ating Panginoon and uh, He can work out everything for the good, pero minsan may consequences yung ating mga decisions. Alright? And God, as a, being a, a good, good father, gaya na sinabi ko ng first Sunday ng series na ito, He's a responsible father. So, He gives you the freedom to make choices. At pati na rin yung consequences ng choices na yun. Okay? Uh, sometimes he might intervene out of his mercy. At hindi mo mararanasan yung consequences ng decision mo. It really happens, but it can happen. Uh, most of the time, kung ano man yung naging consequences o resulta ng decision mo, God permits that and allows that as part ng ating training. I also reminded you na mahalaga maunawaan natin, what pleases God is yung kusa nating pag-submit sa Kanya. Yung willingness natin to let God direct us and guide us in our lives. Not in a controlling manner. Hindi controlling si Lord. Hindi siya yung parang kung ano yung gusto niya, yung masusulod kahit anong i-decide mo. Hindi ganun yun. Alright? He wants to uh, work in us and, and through us. At gusto niya magkaroon tayo ng kusang loob. To obey Him, to trust Him, to do His will. Hindi dahil napipilitan lang tayo. Hindi dahil natatakot lang tayo pumunta sa impyerno. But because of His love for us and our love for Him, nagre-respond tayo sa Kanyang mga ikang initiatives sa buhay natin. That should be the case for all of us. Now, kung hindi pa malinaw sa iyan, maybe you still struggle, maybe iniisip mo siguro na, sige, kung ano lang galaw ba ni Lord, hindi na lang mangyayari. Then that means you're still very immature sa pagkait hindi mo about your relationship with God. God is a good, good Father. Amen? Ang desire niya sa iyo ay mag-mature ka. Maging adult ka, hindi yung maging perpetual child ka na lagi nakadepende na lang o hindi makapag-decide sa sarili mo. However, sinabi ko rin naman sa inyo na may purpose si Lord sa atin. Do you remember that? How many of you were here last Sunday? Okay, tatlo lang kayo. As I remember, parang marami kayo last Sunday. Ah, diba? Okay, anyway. So, last Sunday, I talked about yung God's intentions for you. Kasi bisa din natin natitimbang maigi. Ah. We think na, well, this is my life. Kung ano gusto kong gawin, gagawin ko. How wrong that would be, okay? Hindi totoo yun. God has a purpose for you, but ka nandito ngayon? but ka nabubuhay? Okay? At yung purpose na yun goes beyond doon sa mga akala mong concerns mo. That's why we really have to be careful sa decision-making natin. No? Kasi sometimes may mayroon tayong mga decisions tayo na we would regret later on. Kasi hindi tayo nag-depend sa Kanya. You know? During that process of making a decision. Okay? Napakahalaga po talaga. That we learn itong topic na to, decision making and the will of God. Agree ba kayo? Amen. Alright. So let's move on from there. Now, ang gusto ko pag-usapan natin ngayon is the challenges and means of decision making. I want to talk about yung challenges because I really believe na aamini naman natin siguro lahat tayo rito. One way or the other, there are times talaga na napakahirap mag-decide. Meron din naman mga pagkakataon na napakadali mag-decide. Pag may nag-invite sa'yo na ililibre ka niya, do you really pray about it? Wala na. Mabilis pa sa alas 4, right? Yes! Okay? 
O kaya ako pipili ka ng McDo ba o Jollibee? Well, depende kung ikaw ay batang Jollibee o batang McDo. Uh, that's not something na dinideliberate mo pa sa mind mo. Ako, for example, pag sinabing chicken, tapos na yung usapan. You know, chicken na yan. Okay? Uh, not unless na nare-recall ko na kailangan mag-diet ako. Only those times na medyo na ako nare-reconsider ko yung decision. But anyway, there are times talaga na mahirap mag-decide. Agree? In fact, more than that, gusto ko maintindihan nyo na may challenges involved. Now, thankfully, meron din naman paraan to overcome those challenges. And that's what we're going to talk, talk about this morning. Ready po ba kayo matuto? Okay, taas sa kamay. Ready matuto? Open? Yeah, that's good. Okay? Hindi ko sinabing open-minded ba kayo kasi networking yun. Alright? Let's bow our heads and pray. Hingin tayo kay Lord ng wisdom. Lord, by your grace, tulungan mo kami na maunawaan namin yung challenges na ito ma-factor in namin yung, yung kung minsan yung may mga challenges po talaga na maaaring hindi namin naiintindihan. But today, open our eyes. Help us to understand. And most of all, Lord, tulungan mo kami maintindihan paano ma-overcome yung mga challenges na yun. It may not be parang super easy. Uh, meron pa rin proseso talaga. But I pray that this morning you will help us and you would uh, set us free from our ignorance and teach us your word para mag-grow kami in spiritual maturity. Salamat po, Panginoon. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, lahat ay magsabi po ng Amen. Alright, so let's talk about first yung challenges. Siguro by now, if you've been making decisions or you've been praying, Lord, anong gagawin ko sa ganyang mga sitwasyon, you realize na minsan hindi ganun kadali yun. But I want to spell out kung ano yung mga challenges na yun para maintindihan nyo how difficult minsan decision making can be. The first challenge is this. That our decisions come from within our hearts or yung tinatawag nating spirit, our spirit, okay? So sa madaling salita, hindi lang tayo physical being na meron lang tayong ika nga mga uh, chemicals na nagra-run through our brains or whatever. We're more than that. We are spiritual beings. And because we're spiritual beings, ano ba, saan ba nagmumula? Ano hugot ng mga decisions natin? It comes from within our hearts. And I'm not talking about yung human heart, even though that's true. Kailangan, binabantayan mo rin naman yung human heart natin. Amen? Alalay lang sa sisig. Praise the Lord, di ba? Kasi baka mamaya, kakain tayo ng kain ng mga bagay na makolesterol, and then we suffer for it. Okay, so, alam natin, we have to take care of our physical heart. But I'm talking about, not the physical heart, but the spiritual aspect ng ating pagkatao. The inner being, okay? Kung saan nandoon yung ating mga thoughts, you see, thought is not just tumatakbong chemicals sa utak mo. Thoughts is a, ika nga, uh, an activity of your soul, an activity of your spirit. Okay? So, yung mga thoughts natin, yung ating mga emotions, people don't really understand na yung emotions nila, hindi lang yung parang mga chemical-chemical lang. Kaya some people, na na pag medyo scientific lang ang mindset nila, pag medyo na-depress, tableta agad. Okay? But we're more than just yung mga fluids. Okay? We have a soul. We have a spirit. So sometimes yung mga emotions natin, hindi natin naiintindihan, really come from within. From our hearts. Okay? Kaya ang ultimate solution ng na mga nararandaman natin, yung mga so-called depression, yeah, is really spiritual in nature. Okay? It has to do with the condition of our hearts. Yung mga desires natin. Anybody here na meron mga desires? Talaga? Yung iba walang desire? I don't think so. Lahat tayo may desire. Okay? Kahit mga simpleng desire yan, uh, you know, desire to sleep or desire to eat, lahat tayo may desire. And then meron tayo mga matitinding desire that somehow propels us uh, to, ser- to do certain things. Kaya nga sa mga, you know, darating pa ng mga sermons, like for example, dito sa pinag-uusapan natin, may mga follow-through, even while I'm gone, may mga follow-through tayong conversations dito about how do you really uh, decide in terms of yung how it would affect, okay? Yung relationship mo with God, yung relationship mo with uh, the people of God, yung relationship mo with your own family, o sa kanila kay ni Lord, and even your relationship mo with the lost. All of the things must be considered. Kaya wag kayo nga absent sa mga darating pang mga Sundays. Amen? Kahit wala ako dito, mananatili akong naririto. No, no, I'm just kidding. Hindi, hindi ka lang, okay? But, <laughs> parang multo, di ba? Parang uh, big brother. But, uh, you know, uh, I will be preparing some talks uh, Soul Summit natin this coming uh, end of the month. So be there. Bagamat wala ako physically, I will be appearing doon sa screen. <laughs> no joke. Kidding lang. Okay, but uh, I'll continue to teach you sa iba't ibang aspekto. But going back to what I'm saying, isa sa mga challenges is that yung mga thoughts natin, yung mga desires, 
yung mga value natin, yung mga ano yung pinapahalaga natin, yung mga choices natin, those things are hidden in our hearts. And no one really knows them except God Himself. Mismo, mismo, mismo nga tayo, bisan. We're not even aware of those things. So let's, let me just read this, this verse for you, okay? Proverbs 4, verse 23. Sabi, Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Walang tingin gusto ko maintindihan ng mga taga-aral si C. You are a spiritual being. Hindi ka lang basta physical being dyan na naglalakad. You have something inside na hindi nakikita ng mga tao. Si Lord, alam yun. He sees you through and through. Alam niya what goes on in your heart. Okay? But minsan tayo, hindi na natin na-realize ito. Sometimes meron tayong mga iniisip, meron tayong mga nararamdaman, and it goes on inside our hearts. And the thing is, kung wala ka talagang time to really be uh, still, and to, to, give, to give space para maintindihan mo kung ano nangyayari sa puso mo, sometimes you don't even realize it. May mga pagkakataon minsan na you are being driven by emotions na maring hindi talaga godly or, or galing sa mga siguro mga experiences mo in the past. Maybe meron kang longing for approval and it's hidden in your heart. Now here's the problem. I want you to understand this. Hindi mo malalaman kung ano nangyayari dyan sa puso na yan by being so busy. Okay? Trying to be busy every time and every day doing all sorts of things makes you, ika nga, oblivious or unaware sa mga nangyayari dyan sa loob. Sometimes it will just appear, siguro sa'yo, in terms of stress, atas yung BP mo, o magkakasakit ka. But really, the root cause of that is what is going on inside your heart. Okay? Minsan, nagkakaroon ng mga problema sa mga relationships natin. Kakaroon tayo ng mga conflicts because there are things in your heart na hindi pa nare-resolve. Okay? Na ikaw mismo hindi mo alam. Eh, hindi mo malalaman if you just continue to live a lifestyle of hurriedness or being super busy. That's why we're teaching you. Learn to live a, a life na may pacing. We, God did not create us na parang working machine tayo. The 24-7, trabaho lang ng trabaho. And we never have the time to rest. Kasi pag ginawa mo yun, you will not be able to really understand even your own heart. Are you listening? You know, I'm leading a study group on sacred rhythms, as you well know, okay? Dalawa ang grupo ko. Isang grupo ng mga kabataan, or shall I say, young professionals, okay? And then, yung isang grupo ko, hindi na sila young. Young at heart na lang sila, okay? Ano sila? Chronologically challenged people, okay? Sila yung malapit na mag-dual citizenship, okay? So, I have two groups. Pero common ang kanilang hinaing. Especially when we started talking about the need to practice yung silence and solitude, at yung sabat, yung idea na sabat. Nako, pare-pareho na reaksyon. Mapabata, mapamatanda. Ang hirap, i-practice ito, Pastor. Hindi namin alam paano namin gagawin ito. Doon sa mga kabataan, sabi nila, eh, kasi busy sa trabaho, etc. Doon naman sa mga chronologically challenged, sasabihin nila, ang dami kasi labada, ang dami yung lulutuin, ang dami yung sasampay, pati mga anak namin gusto namin isampay. You know? So, lahat na lang, marami inaasikaso. Eh, isa lang hinahing nila, how do we do this? Well, let me tell you something. If you don't do it, pag hindi mo ginawa, if you don't practice the rhythm of grace, so that's the sacred rhythms, Ikaw ang magsasuffer because you would not even be aware na may mga issues ka dyan sa loob na gusto ng Panginoon na i-address mo in the presence of God. May mga fears ka dyan. May mga feeling of shame or guilt ka dyan. May mga anger ka na mari nasa ilalim hindi na-address. And these are affecting your decision making. Are you listening? Hello? Sometimes kasi tayo hindi natin alam Lalo na kung may nararamdaman tayo. Kasi ang takbo ng isip na maraming tao, pag, may, pag meron kang naisip, may nararamdaman ka, sige, decide ka na. Without understanding na, wait, baka yung heart mo eh, wala sa ayos. Right? You should be watching your heart. Sabi dito, guard your heart. So sabi mo sa katawin mo, guard your heart. Sa Tagalog, puso mo. <laughs> diba? Bantayan mo yung puso mo. Because the thing is, nakatago yan eh. That's the challenge eh. Nakatago. Amen? Hindi siya obvious. In fact, ilang ba sa atin dito ang aware na pag may nararandama kang isang bagay, it's actually your soul manifesting itself. Okay? Akala lang natin nagagalit lang tayo. Akala lang natin nagtatampo tayo. But actually, it's your heart appearing out there. Okay? 
So, makikita mo na stress yung tao. It's hindi lang siya basta stress. It's his heart. It's her heart that is coming out. Okay? And so, kung meron tayong time, and I hope na sana ma-realize ito, huwag tayong mabuhay talaga na parang parang ever ready. Alam mo yun, commercial, di ba? Di ba? Tuloy-tuloy lang ng tuloy-tuloy. Let's practice yung, yung pacing na tama para we have time, times natin, times of silence, times of refreshing, para we can reflect, Lord, saan ang gagaling yung decision na ito? Bakit saan nagbumula ito mga, mga dinidiscarte ko na ito? Para sa ganun, we can become more aware. Gets? Amen? All right. So, the second challenge is that our hearts or spirits natin can be influenced either by God or Satan from within. Now, that's the scary part. Akala lang natin kasi pag may naisip ka, naisip mo lang. What we don't know really is this is important in the spiritual realm, kung nasaan na yung mga thoughts natin, desires natin, emotions natin, hindi lang tayo involved dun sa arena na yun. There is what you call God, the Holy Spirit, who influences our thoughts, who speaks to our thoughts, at tinatawag na still small voice is basically God speaking to our thoughts. Now, at the same time, hindi lang naman siya pwede mangusap sa atin. Si Satan din, pwede mangusap sa atin. <laughs> and that's the problem because sometimes, akala natin, yung naiisip natin, ay eh, isip lang natin. When in fact, baka yung iniisip mo na, ay hindi lang basta galing sa'yo, kundi nai-influensya ka na ng kaaway. And the problem na gusto ko maintindihan nyo rito is that whenever Satan tries to influence us, doon sa deep thoughts natin, hindi agad natin nare-recognize yun. In fact, ang tawag kay Satan sa Bible is an angel of light. Ibig sabihin, nagdi-disguise siya. No? Hindi siya, nag, hindi siya nag-influence sa atin in such a way na obvious na siya. Right? For example, okay, pag tinignan mo yung, yung katabi mo na yan, right? Tinignan mo. So, hindi, hindi, hindi niya alam kung ano iniisip mo, pero baka mga sa isip mo para gusto mo na siyang sakalin. Okay? Now, yung idea na sakalin mo yung katabi mo, I mean, that's very obvious. Huwag mo gagawin yun, right? Pero yung mga thoughts na, for example, na para, Uy, kunin mo na yan, ano na yan, yung trabaho na yan. Uy, sumagsagutin mo na siya. Yung mga ganun mga thoughts na yan, you are not, you cannot assume na yung pumasok sa isip mo na yun, eh agad ikaw lang yun. Or that, tama yan. Let me ex- ex- explain to you through the Word of God kung ano ibig ko sabihin. Sabi, the, sur- the Spirit searches all things. Okay? Even the, the deep things of God. And then it goes on, sabi, for who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? Diba? Tama yun, right? That's why hindi tayo makaka-judge ng mga thoughts and intentions ng mga tao unless we ask them. We don't really know. Tingnan mo ulit yung katabi mo. Okay? Titigan mo sila. Alam mo ba kung anong iniisip na ito ko sa'yo? Hindi, di ba? Baka nasa creating na kanila, iniisip mo, ang pangit ang damit nito. You know? So yung makeup nito, hindi ko tayo. You know, so whatever it is na iniisip ng tao, hindi mo alam unless you ask them. Only when you ask a person na pwede niya i-share. Minsan nga, hindi pa niya i-share yung totoo. Di ba? Kaya pag sinabi mo, okay ba yung gupit ko? Ah, okay naman, pag-pray natin yung gumupit sa'yo. You know? so, pero yun, hindi nila sasabihin na, okay, sasabihin, ipupurihin ka na. Sabihin, Uy, pumapayat ka. Pero sa isip natin, ang taba mo, grabe. You know? We don't know the thoughts of people, eh, right? It's something deep within. However, look at the next verse. Sabi dito, In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. So, God has thoughts at sinishare niya yung thoughts na yun sa atin also in our thoughts. So, possibly, now what you're thinking about at a certain time may be influenced by the Holy Spirit, which is good. Okay? Kung meron ka naiisip na in line with God's thoughts, well, praise the Lord, right? Pag sinabi ng Panginoon sa'yo na, well, love this person or do good to this person. And, you know, galing kay Lord yun and you do it and that's great, Right? Pero hindi sa lahat ng pagkakataong ganun eh. Lalong lang na kasi minsan na hindi natin nare-recognize na yung thought na yung bagamat hindi outwardly masama talaga. But if you are just going to analyze it and really scrutinize it at kung saan pupunta yun, saka mo lang talaga marirealize na, teka muna, mali yata yun. Pero at the outset, sa umpisa, hindi mo magandang makikita o marirecognize yun. In fact, if somebody were to confront you concerning sa thought na yun, baka magalit ka pa. Baka i-justify mo pa yung sarili mo. Baka sabi mo, bakit? Masama ba yun? Isn't that true sa lahat sa atin? Minsan, kung may naiisip tayo, may pinaplano tayo, somebody holds us accountable to that. Sabi, uy, bakit ganyan? Ang reaction mo, imbis na sabihin, bakit? Diba? May mali ba doon? Ang reaction mo, bakit? Sino ka? Buhay ko to, ah! Without really thinking na maybe 
yung nag operate sa'yo at that point in time is no longer God, but the evil one. Okay? Now, sabi dito sa verse 12, and this is a blessing sa ating lahat, what we have received is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. So, notice nyo, understand. Sabi nyo nga po, understand? So, it is in our thinking process, that's why the Bible says, renew your mind. It is in the thinking process that God can influence us. Naintindihan nyo po ba? So, habang nag-iisip tayo, in fact, eh, eh, gusto ko maintindihan nyo ito, pag nagpipray ka, Lord, please guide me. God actually guides you through your own thoughts. No? By giving you thoughts in line with His will. Now, however, uh, kailangan natin ma-recognize ito, hindi lahat na iisip natin siyempre from God. And that's my point. Now, tingnan natin itong pagkakataon ito. This is a, an interesting uh, episode, lalo na sa buhay ni Peter. Before this incident, let me give you the context, tinatanong ni Jesus, Ano daw tingin ng mga tao sa kanya? Sino ba siya sa, ayon sa mga tao? Sabi ng mga apostles, well, sabi ng mga tao, prophet ka daw, ganyan-ganyan. So, tinanong ni Jesus, eh kayo, anong tingin nyo? Si Peter, nag-volunteer mga kapatid. Yabang, no? Sabi ni Peter, you are the Christ. Di ba? You are the, ano, ikaw nga, parang in niya si Jesus. At si Jesus naman, sabi, that's good. Yung isip na yan, yung thought na yan, hindi galing sa yan. Galing kay Lord yan. Wow. So, na-affirm si Peter. Amen? Paminsan-minsan, may nasasabi si Peter na tama, no? Amen. Praise God. However, look at what happened just immediately after that. So from that time on, Jesus began to explain to His disciples that He must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders uh, and the chief priests and the teachers of the law and that He must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Now, now stuck up sila doon sa killed kasi sa theology nila up to that point in time, Yung Messiah, yung tagapagligtas, should not be killed kasi He is the Messiah. He is the Lord. So, hindi naka-factor in sa theology nila o sa pagkaintindi nila na merong mamamatay na Messiah. So, shock sila doon. Pero sabi ni Jesus, this is what is going to happen. Alright? Now, look at the result of that. Pagkasabi ni Jesus, Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Now, sabi nyo nga po, astig. I mean, astig to si Peter, nirebuke si Jesus. Now, the word is so strong na basically ang ginawa ni, ano, ni, ni Peter talaga, pinagsabihan talaga si Jesus. Imagine mo yun, di ba? The, the Messiah, the Son of God, you know, the, the, the most holy, holy Jesus, pagsasabihan mo, right? Anyway, ganito sabi ni Peter, Never, Lord! Okay? Never, Lord! This shall never happen to you. Now, saan yung galing yun? May naisip siya eh. Amen? Naisip niya na parang, wow, mali yan, huwag na, hindi pwede magyari yan. And look at the response of Jesus. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Peter. And then, the Peter, get behind me. Wow, may bagong nickname si Peter. Okay? Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. So one moment, he was thinking godly thoughts. The next moment, he was thinking other thoughts. That are not from God. And that's the challenge sa ating lahat. Because one moment, yung mga naiisip mo is truly glorifying to God. The next moment, kung di ka mag-iingat, you may be thinking thoughts that are not from God. Amen? Medyo sobering ba ng konti, ha? Alright? That's why, akala mo lang naiisip mo yon, Akala mo lang nararandaman mo yon, Akala mo lang na meron kang desire. Akala mo lang may plano ka. Pero hindi mo alam doon, you're slowly being deceived. You're slowly being misdirected. Now, ang mahirap dito, hindi naman nagpapakilala si Satan. Are you with me? Diba? Hindi siya mangungusap sa puso mo at niya, <coughs> excuse me, ako nga pala si Satan. <laughs> okay? Immediately, i-rebuke mo yun. Diba? Pag may pumasok sa isip mo na alam mo mali, I rebuke that. Diba? Pero minsan, hindi ganun eh. Minsan sasabihin sa'yo, di ba mahal mo siya? Di ba mahal ka rin niya? Di ba nagmamahalan kayo? Di ba sabi sa Bible, God is love? Anong problema? Di ba? Bakit mo kikimkimin yan? Ilabas mo yan. Di ba? Now, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Siguro, di mo lang napapansin, sinasabi, Anak, may asawa na siya. Huwag, mo punta, huwag ka pumunta dyan sa direksyon na yan. But, you know, especially when you have these strong emotions, minsan di ka nakakaroon ng awareness na yung mga naiisip mo. Di ba? 
ay maaaring hindi na ayon sa kalooban ng Panginoon. It can happen anytime. You know, the other day, kumakain ako, ang sarap ng kinakain ko. So, you know, nilagay ko sa tinapay, kumain ako, at sabi ng ano ko, ng isip ko, ang sarap nito. No? So, kumuha ulit ako ng isa pa. Okay? As kinain ko na naman ulit. Tapos sabi ko, grabe, ang sarap. You know? Tapos kumuha na naman ako ng isa. Di ba? Doon sa proseso na yun, I was not thinking na, wow, sige, kumain ka pa na kumain ng carbs. Sinan natin kung ano mangyayari si Chan mo. Okay? And so, my wife, you know, in her, in her goodness of heart, sabi sa akin, love, nakakatatlong tinapay ka na. Di ba? Ako naman parang, bakit? Hindi ko ba karapat kumain na tinapay? No? Ako, nagtatrabaho dito. Ha? <laughs> See, sometimes you're not even aware na meron kang mga ginagawa at may mga thinking ka, may mga thoughts ka that are not in line with God's will for your life. Are you listening? Okay? So, it just catches us off guard. Kaya ito, challenge ito sa atin. Don't ever think na lahat ang naiisip mo at lahat ang nararamdaman mo at lahat ang pinaplano mo, immediately okay yan. Because sometimes, hindi ka aware. Hindi si Lord na nag i sa iyo, kundi ang kaaway. Amen? May tao ba dito? Kanina naman sinabi kayo, marami nag i Pero ng second service, wala nag i Amen Amen ba? All right. Okay. Now, the third challenge is that without discernment, we can be deceived. That's the biggest challenge of all. Pag sinabing deceive or deception, ibig sabihin, hindi mo alam na dinideceive ka. Right? Hindi mo alam eh. Malay. Pag sinabing deception, hindi mo alam eh. Look, look at this particular passage in Genesis. Look, you know, confront the Lord si Eve. Sabi, then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? Now, tinan yung sagot ng babae. The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. You see, ang pangalan ni Satan is that he is a deceiver. Naibig sabihin ng deceiver. Years ago, meron nag lumapit sa akin, no? Na isang kapatiran natin na nabiktima sa alabang. Okay? Habang nandun siya sa alabang, naglalakad siya doon, walang kamalay, malay. May lumapit sa kanya at sabi, Naku, uh, miss, tulungan mo naman ako. O bakit? Ano nangyari? Eh kasi, ano eh, meron akong, ano, uh, kailangan, pag pag-iiwanan muna ako na itong pera na ito kasi meron akong pupuntahan na yun kung dala-dala ko itong pera na ito. Pero babalik ako rin. Binigyan siya ng isang, isang buong pa, ano, no, pera parang makapal. Nakabalot si Jario. Okay? Sabi niya, eh, sabi nung itong kapatiran natin, ay, nako, ayoko po ang hawakan niya. Baka mayroon mawala yan. Hindi, hindi. Sige, sandali lang. So, may usap-usap sila. Finally, sabi ng tao, sige, ito na lang. Bigay mo muna sa akin cellphone mo para may garantya ako na pagbalik ko, mababalik ako pa yung pera ko na yan. So, yung kapatiran natin, sabi niya, Ang daming pera nito, di ba? So, iniisip niya, cellphone, ano ba niya? So, binigay niya yung cellphone niya. So, naghihintay siya kaya ng tagal, hindi pa bumabalik. Finally, nag-alala na siya. Sabi niya, sa kaya yung tao na yun? So, ginawa niya, sinilip na niya ngayon yung balutan. Nakita niya, merong isang daan doon sa ibabaw. Sabi niya, oh, grabe. Pero nung tinan niya yung gitna, puro papel na. Tapos, hindi na binalikan yung kanyang, yung pera na yun. In other words, sinakbo na yung kanyang cellphone sa halagang isang daan. Let me tell you something about the way Satan operates. Pag hindi ka nagpa-practice ng sapat na pagsusuri or, or in, you know, just going into that, what influences yung mga decision mo, you can be deceived so easily. Lahat tayo can be deceived so easily that alam ng kaaway kung ano yung mga desires mo eh. Alam niya yung mga gusto mo eh. Nakiki- Bagamat hindi niya kayang basahin ang iniisip mo because only God can do that. Amen? Pero tinitingnan niya yung mga behavior mo. Alam niya natatakot ka, so i-reinforce niya yung takot mo. Right? Kaya yun ang dahilan bakit minsan pupunta ka sa isang lugar na madilim. Have you noticed this? Pupunta ka sa ilim, medyo nag-hesitate ka, medyo kinakaba ka. And then suddenly, bago ka pumasok doon sa madilim na lugar, parang mayroong papasok sa isip mo na, may white lady dyan. Di ba? May hold up her dyan. Suddenly, mga hangatok na, pagpapawisan ka na, di ba? Hindi ka na, ano, hindi ka na pupunta. Because, Satan knows how to capitalize do sa mga initial mong naiisip. He knows how to, ika nga, kaya niya susugan yung mga naiisip mo. Now, minsan, nagpe-pray ka, and then parang hindi ka sinasagot ng Panginoon. Out of nowhere, ma- maririnig mo sa, sa isipan mo, siguro walang malasakit sa sa Panginoon. Si Lord, maybe He doesn't really care for me. Maybe siguro si God, siguro galit siya sa akin kasi marami akong kasalanan. And on and on it goes. Sa may konti, hindi na mapinta yung mukha mo. Di ba? Depressed ka na without recognizing na baka yung thoughts na yun are not really from you. It's not really even from God. It's from the evil one. 
But you see, hindi mo nalalaman, hindi mo naiintindihan. Especially, kung hindi ka naman aware sa mga bagay na ganito. Are you listening? Especially, pag pasok na yung mga strong desires and emotions like, like love, for example. Pansin niyo di ba? Pag na-love na isang tao, ano yung sinasabi sa kasabihan ng Pilipino, di ba? Pag pag-ibig ay pumasok sa puso ni Numan. Ahamaki ng lahat. Di ba? Ano yun? Susunod dun? Makam- Alam na lang ni Brother Paul. Sigurado yan ang kanyang moto. Okay? Makamtan ka lamang. Okay. So, ang point natin dito is that when there are strong emotions swirling inside of us, it takes discipline for us to just pause and say, Teka mo na, wait a second. Let me evaluate itong mga nararamdaman ko. Let me evaluate itong mga desires ko na ito. Okay? Let me evaluate yung mga thoughts na pumapasok sa isip ko. Because it's happening inside of me, pero minsan di ko alam kung ano yun. Saan nang gagaling. Okay? And by God's grace, pwede natin ma-overcome ito. Kung pag-aaralan natin papano. So let's talk about the three means to guard against deception. Are you still willing to learn? Okay? So it's like parang dalawang sermon to in one sermon. Okay? They have two parts. So let's talk about you know, how to guard against deception. The number one, Weapon mo talaga is revelation. Revelation. Kasi ang revelation is ika nga the objective uh, ano, basis of what is right and wrong. Nasa Bible, yung commandments ni Lord. Nasa Bible, yung kanyang will. Makikita natin, it is God's will for you to be thankful always. Alam mo na, it's God's will na ganito. Hindi niya tinatago sa atin kung ano yung dapat natin maintindihan about God's will. Okay? Now, sabi dito sa Matthew 4, as an example, si Jesus mismo, Okay? The tempter, si Satan, came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Now, what is harmful about that? Gawin mo lang naman bread yung, yung bato. And bilang the Son of God, baka hindi lang maging bread dyan. Baka maging Jacob pa yan. O baka maging uh, Goldilocks pa yan. Kaya kaya ni Jesus yan, right? It's not really a challenge, it's not even a problem, okay? Kaya kaya ni Jesus. But look at the answer of Jesus. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Can I speak to you very honestly, mga kapatid, bilang mga pastor? Bilang pastor nyo, na, na, hindi mga pastor, bilang pastor. A lot of us dito, okay, nagpapakabisi tayo sa maraming bagay except really devoting ourselves to the study of God's word para ma-educate tayo, para ma-transform yung thinking natin, para malaman natin ang word of God. Kasi what happens is that, pag dumating na yung temptation, pag dumating na yung mga kaisipan, wala kang greed, wala kang way to address it kasi hindi mo naman alam kung anong tama at mali. Especially, you know, when, I, when, I, when you listen sa, sa, sa teaching ko this uh, Soul Summit sa August, I'll be talking about the, the anatomy of desire. I want to talk to you about what happens pag nagdi-desire ka ng isang bagay. Because really, if you don't know Akala mo na, you know, yung siniisip mo na tama is in fact mali. If you know the Word of God. Now, pag hindi ka aware sa Word of God, eh, alam niyo naman si Seita, magaling yan. Misa nga, nagkukot pa ng scripture yan. If you don't know the Word of God, ang dali mo ma-deceive. So, ang guardia o ang guard o para ma-depensa tayo, immerse yourself in the Word of God. Huwag kang tamarin. Devote yourself to the study of the Word of God. Kailangan mo yun. Kahit ang pakunti-kunti. But do it. Amen? Huwag niyo hayaan ang buhay niyo na araw-araw na lang lumilipas, wala kang ginawa kasi manood ng TV, manood ng Netflix, magbasa ng ganito, manood ng Cinema One, or whatever pinapanood niyo. And yet, yun lang, puro yun lang pumapasok sa iyo eh. So therefore, hindi mo alam what is God's will for you. And here's the problem. Hindi mo rin alam how good God is in your life. One of the things that tactic ni Satan is to make you think that there is something missing sa buhay mo when in fact God has already given that to you. Naitinan niyo po yun? Sometimes si Satan sasabihin niya, oh wala ka niya, kunin mo yan. When in fact God already said, it is yours. All things are yours. <laughs> Amen? So, very important, revelation. Sabihin niyo nga po, revelation. revelation. Now, some of you dito need to repent. Amen? Some of you dito medyo tinamaan ng sakit na katamaran. Okay? But please, don't allow yourself. Okay? Magiging punching bag ka ng kaaway, magiging, ikaw ka napakadali mong lukohin ng kaaway pag hindi mo alam ang Word of God. Are you with me? Amen? 
So take the time to study the Word of God. Okay? Now, pangalawa is reason. Okay? Reason. In other words, meron tayong pag-iisip. Sino rito may pag-iisip? Hallelujah! Okay? Yung hindi nagtaas, I'll pray for you. Grabe, laki ng problema mo. Lahat tayo binigyan ng Panginoon ng pag-iisip. Let me show you from Scripture how reason uh, you know, comes into play. Then some of the believers, sabi sa Bible, who belong to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, the Gentiles must be circumcised and required to keep the law of Moses. Now, context lang, dumadami na yung mga nakoconvert ng mga Gentiles, in other words, hindi sila mga Jew, nakoconvert sila, so nagkaroon ng problema, anong gagawin natin sa mga, Jew, sa mga Gentile na ito? In other words, hindi sila mga Jew, so anong gagawin natin? So, nagsuggest sila, well, dapat ang mga Gentiles, pareho din natin, dapat mas circumcised din sila, at dapat sumunod din sila sa law of Moses, which, if you're familiar, napakarami nun, okay? Bawal kumain ito, bawal kumain niya, ganito, maraming batas yun, alright? Hindi lang Ten Commandments. Now, so sabi ng mga nagsuggest, yan ang gawin natin, kasi mukhang yan naman yung tama. Now, look at what happened after this. Okay? The apostles and elders met to consider this question. Now, the word this consider means, din, ano nila, diniscuss nila, dinilibrate nila, pinag-usapan nila, they use their brains. They use their reasons. Okay? Are you with me? Binigyan tayo ng Panginoon ng pag-iisip para sa ganun, gagamitin po natin yun. Amen. Now, for example, okay? Now, there was this one person who told me about yung nag- nagkakaroon siya ng burden sa isa sa kanyang mga kamag-ara kasi yung marriage parang nasisira o nag unravel And so, we, we talked about it. Explore ko. Sabi, ano ba ang problema? Well, kasi itong asawa niya uh, medyo irresponsible, hindi, hindi marunong ano, palag- ang pangalagaan yung pamilya, lag- daming bisyo, alak, sigarilyo, uh, tongits, lahat, okay. Ano pa? Well, itong tao na to, parang hindi caring. Ang daming sinabi sa akin problema ng pasawa ng kamag-anak niya. Sabi ko, wow, ang saklap naman. Now, can I ask a question? Sabi niya, sure. Sabi ko, alam ba ng kamag-anak mo itong mga katangihan na to bago niya pinakasalang? And then, of course, yung answer, Opo, alam niya. Oh, nabibili yata sa pure gold yung isip. Dapat iniisip mo yun eh. Right? Kahit gwapo yan, kung tokhang naman yan, o pang tokhang, I mean, gamitin mo naman yung isip mo. Eh, la- loves ko siya eh. O loves mo nga siya. Pero use your brain. Kung yung tao naman yan ay magiging pasakit sa'yo forever and ever, anong silbi nyo? Eh, loves ko siya eh. No, like, uh, there's this guy na in love na in love siya sa isang babae, talaga na lagi na didelirio siya pa lagi sa kakaisip niya dito sa girl lunch na ito. Pero sabi ko, tingnan mo yung babae niya. Okay? Bakit po? Di ba? Walang panahon for the Lord. Walang panahon to, to serve God. Walang panahon to get into God's Word. Puro lang, walang ginawa kasi sa salamin lang. Ganun lang na ganun sa salamin. You want to eh, go into that kind of no, relationship? Eh, pastor, ang ganda niya. Oo nga. So, forever? Ganun? Forever? Isip! Amen? Binigay yung utak para gamitin eh. Eh, pastor, lumatay itong trabaho na to. Hindi, hindi ko naman pinagpipili. Basta, tapos, lahat, okay na lahat eh. Parang, oo, oo na lang ako eh. Ganun? Bakit ang, ang dali-dali? Papasok ka na. Oo kasi, hindi ko, hindi ko hindi kay Lord yan. Ba't ang dali? Hoy, 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 hoy. Hindi po kahit madali kay, kay Lord na yan. Tandaan niyo sabi ni Satan kay, kay Jesus no, during the temptation. O, bibigay ko na sa'yo lahat ng, kuma, ano, lahat ng kingdoms of this world. Ang dali. Hindi lahat ang madali kay Lord. Kasi itong tao to sabi niya, eh, eh pastor, ang ganda ng kita eh. Ang ganda, ang laki ng bayad eh. Really, gamitin mo yung isipan mo. Yung trabaho na yan will eat up all your time and energy at wala ka ng time to serve God na dating heart mo naman. Isip. May isip ka eh. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, may isip ka. Huwag mo iwan sa bahay. Alright. Now, finally, is yung recognition mo. This is the spiritual aspect of it all. Yung ma-recognize mo. Ano yung nangyayari dyan sa loob at yung naririnig mo tinig? 
Because even though gumagamit ka ng revelation at gumagamit ka ng reason, you still have to recognize if it is the Lord or not. Now, this is a topic na I'm sure medyo kailangan i-unpack natin. Kaya doon sa mga susunod na sermons next Sunday, you know, yung mga pastors natin will begin to unpack yung detalye nito. And most of all, sa summit natin, I'll talk to you about the five guidelines para malaman nyo kung evil spirit ba yan o Holy Spirit. Who would, who would like to learn that? So nyo malaman. Okay, so okay ma-absent sa Soul Summit natin. Remember yan, every fourth Sunday of the month, meron tayong Soul Summit. So, Kahit wala ako dito, mag appear ako dito. Okay, so I'll be here. I'll be teaching you about the five guidelines. Pero pakinggan nyo rin yung tuturo, ituturo ng mga pastor because they're going to talk about ano yung, yung mga dapat pinag-iisipan mo at we need way more carefully before you make a decision. Now, recognition. Let's, let's look at 1 John 4.1. You know, di natin may explore lahat ito. But sabi sa 1 John 4.1, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit. Amen? But test the spirits to see whether they are from God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So therefore, ibig sabihin, hindi lahat ang naririnig mo, hindi lahat ang nakaka-influensya sa'yo is from God, so you need to test. Kailangan meron kang basihan to discover ano itong naiisip ko, ano itong nararamdam akong desire. Saan nang gagaling ito? Unfortunately, meron mga mananampalataya, obvious na sa lahat, na yung desire na lumalabas sa puso niya is not really from God, but pero because of lack of training and lack of wisdom, minsan nadadala tayo ng mga desires natin na actually totoo, evil siya in nature. Evil desires rather than godly desires. Some people medyo may maturity na, kita din nila agad. That's an evil desire. Others, kailangan ng training. Hindi masyadong familiar. Okay? So therefore, what I'm saying in effect is this. We must be discerning because decision-making is challenging. Amen? We must be discerning kasi po, decision-making is challenging. Do you understand that? Okay? Are you listening? Hindi ganun kadali. Remember, di ba? It's hidden. Yung mga thoughts mo, right? Pwede ka ma-influensya ng Holy Spirit. Pwede ka rin ma-influensya ng evil spirit. At yung pagdi-discern requires discipline, requires time. Hindi pwedeng puro busy, busy, busy. You can easily be deceived by the enemy. Di ba? Who capitalizes on those desires, those thoughts na umaandar sa puso mo. Amen? And that's why dito sa series ato, I hope na we can all learn and grow and become more mature and more wiser sa mga dinidecide natin. Did you learn something this morning? Amen? Amen? 